Now then, if you're a player who enjoys melee, this one is for you. But not only that, players like myself who are more into gunplay will easily enjoy a build like this when it does damage like that. Yeah, that's rather nasty in my opinion and honestly quite addictive at the same time. Let me go ahead and walk you through what's happening and what brings this build together. And as always, timestamps will be added beneath the video. Kicking things off with our Warframe of Choice, Colervo, and a breakdown of his abilities. Passive. All and any equipped melee weapons in the hands of Colervo receive a 75% increase to heavy attack efficiency and a 100% increase to heavy attack windup speeds. On top of that, most of his abilities will also add to your melee combo counter on hit, making it much easier to build combos with this Warframe in particular. Colervo's first ability is Raffle Advance. And this one is basically his bread and butter for what we're wanting. For starters, let me go ahead and explain how it works mechanically. You see, by tapping his first ability, Clovo will teleport to an enemy and heavy attack them. Now, if you don't have a melee weapon equipped, he would simply just teleport to the enemy. But you see, holding down this ability, Clovo can freely teleport around towards the direction of your aiming reticle. See, either of these actions will apply a 200% additive critical chance to your melee weapons, in which can also scale that value even further by adding strength to your builds. Now, this is huge because those critical builds can get enhanced further, but all of the weapons that couldn't normally modify the critical can now take this critical option. And furthermore, to add, this ability is also Colovo's subsumable ability within the helmet. So yeah, any other melee-related Warframes that you enjoy, well, they just got better and bigger when you pair them with a build like this. Clovo's second ability is Recompense. Surrounding Clovo are daggers which when close to enemies will strike into them giving Clovo overguard for each dagger hit. If there are no enemies nearby and the daggers miss they will then go to betray the user returning back and striking Clovo instead. This ability is fantastic due to how easy it is to use, spam and gain one of the best protections to Warframe in its current state, Overguard. Clovo's third ability is Collective Curse. Cast this ability sends out a curse that binds to all enemies hit with a chain-like link. Whenever one enemy takes damage, the others will take a portion of that damage too. So Collective Curse mostly synergizes with his next ability more so, but ultimately it can help your melee builds. If you just go ahead and mod for an awful lot of range, you can go and scale it way further and helping you spread damage out further where you're not really needing to travel and gap close too. So then finally we got Clivo's fourth ability, Storm of Yuko. Clover hails daggers raining down from the sky with guaranteed slash box onto enemies and a chance to stagger them per hit. Now, as mentioned, this would synergize well with his previous ability, but more so for this video and my build in mind, this is the ability we're going to take out and sub soon. This is where we'll be adding in Grendel's Nourish ability from the Helminth Infusion, which will go and add viral to our weapons attacks, but also give us a big energy multiplier due to some of the spamming that we'll be doing. It'll make our energy return much easier and faster to acquire. And for what it's worth, I will also go and mention that you can use some other abilities here instead, such as Rhino's Roar or even Mirage's Eclipse as examples. They both work very well and in other cases actually add more damage to the build. For now, we're going to go ahead and help our energy you return with Nourish, as the quality of life just makes this build feel more enjoyable without needing specific focus schools or companions to make up for the loss in areas like energy. So that's going to be the rundown of Colervo in a nutshell. Overall, he promotes great returns for melee-centric builds, and with specific helmet infusions, we can synergize and ramp our damage and utility to a whole new level. So what else are we needing here? As we move towards the direction of showcasing Colovo's builds, let's go ahead and quickly cover the other aspects and what they bring to the builds. So then, let's go and talk about primers. What are they and how to benefit from them the most? A primer in Warframe is typically seen as something that enhances something else further, which scales off of it. So to explain this, we're going to go and use two mods here as the examples. Primed Pressure Point would yield our builds with a 165% damage increase. This is seen more so of a flat increase in comparison to condition overloads. This mod will give us 80% damage increase per different status type affecting the target that you're going to go ahead and attack. This mod, as you can see, would scale, but obviously it needs a little help. There are plenty of elements in Warframe, all ranging from different values and doing different things whenever applied. If you're new to the game, take some time to go and brush up and read more about them, as I'm not going to be explaining them inside out here. What I will go and do is remind you that the generic basic 13 elements are easily applied within everyday missions. IPS, base elements, and combined elements. And all of these can also be applied by different things, not just weapons. You see, the likes of companions and Warframes can also apply these pretty easily too. 
2. With that in mind, we're going to go ahead and use the condition overload mods that help it with specific primary or secondary weapons that their sole purpose is to simply apply elements onto enemies in order to go and help our melee builds. So here's one of the better examples right here, the epitaph. By tapping the epitaph fire button, it sends out a quick shot AOE explosive slab that deals a fantastic amount of status chance. In this fire mode and aiming at the ground, you will apply cold procs and blast procs to nearby enemies. However, if you landed these shots on enemies instead directly, you would also be slowly adding the IPS elements in just a few shots as well. So go ahead and keep in mind that this is completely unmodded and this already has a way to achieve five different status elements. Going off what we know about condition overloads, this means that this would increase our melee damage by 400% and so far that was quite effortless. But let's go ahead and push this further. Now primers are looking for usually quite a few different things. High status chance. As much as you can apply, going over 100% means that we stack elements quicker and a chance to apply different elements quicker too. High fire rate, because building up elements like viral only but helps us even further. Do keep in mind all elements have their own duration, so we want to go and build them up as quick as possible before they start expiring. Fire rate and attack speed is going to help us achieve that. As many different elements as possible. Now you see, the more the better. So starting off with a weapon that already has a good amount of innate status types is usually a good start. And go ahead and keep in mind, we usually want different elements on our primer than our melee weapon, because the melee weapon can also apply its own different status types. That only but helps scale this further too. AoE is going to be a great factor, especially for horde ad clearing. So any increase there helps affect more targets per shot with little effort. Damage instances for primary and secondary weapons are important. You see, multi-shot plays a big factor as it factors in probability. The more multi-shot that you add to the builds, the more shots you are doing per fire. And with more shots and more bullet output in mind, each shot and each bullet is going to have its own values to go off. For example, one bullet may not go in proc status chance because it just got RNG'd. But because you added multi-shot to your builds, the other bullet that you shot out did go and apply status because it just got lucky, whereas the other one didn't. So obviously, the more shots that you have going out with high status and high fire rate, it just means that there will be plenty more elements being applied very quickly and very effortlessly. And obviously, the more shots that you're going to go and have out with high status and high fire rate just means that there'll be plenty more elements being applied very quickly. And finally, in some cases, but not all cases, you're going to want the most important element to be the highest in the number value. In our case, viral. Debuffing enemies and allowing for bigger amplified damage to health helps us significantly so it's important my viral on this build is higher than others because whenever status chance does go and apply it typically looks for the highest value first then trickles down the list go ahead and start applying the others secondaries are in a good spot right now with this arcane here named secondary cucumber this has a 24 percent chance to trigger a random status effect anytime you proc status procs and on a build like this we're already over a hundred percent status so we're basically guaranteed to always get that 24 percent chance every shot you see if we were under 100 percent status well we're adding an extra factor that's not working for us it's just two layers of rng if you will so now shooting just a couple of times with this epitaph build gives us a lot more status elements being applied to enemies and there's still rng the factor in morph with the arcane cucumber in mind but most importantly since i modded for viral we're in a very sweet spot where my melee isn't just scaling off condition overload but it will also scale off that viral debuff as well and just look how quick it is to go ahead and build it up lovely stuff and just before we go and move into the next topic on screen are some other other primers that you can go and take and use. Again, they're relatively similar builds of mind, so try it for yourself if you do not own the Epitaph. Focus Schools. So our choice of Focus School is going to be the Naramon Focus School. This will go and help you with quite a few selective perks. Let's go and start off with the Power Spike perk. Whenever you go and build up your combo counter and it's about to expire, this will stop it from decaying completely. Instead, it now slowly decays, which allows mods such as Blood Rush or Weeping Wounds to remain higher in their combos without needing to rebuild. Do go and keep in mind, whenever you go ahead and heavy attack, your damage will scale off your combo counter as well. Other perks such as Opening Slam will also go and increase your combo count chance per melee hit by jumping into the air, switching over to your operator, and then activating your melee attack. It'll do a fast swap back into your Warframe and give you the opening spam bonus. From there, just basically hit as many enemies as you can and you build it up a lot quicker with your combo. Sling Stun and Killer's Rush can also go and help you if you go and activate your second ability on your operator, sling into an enemy, now go ahead and X 
execute and activate a finisher button on them, it'll quickly swap your operator over to your Warframe and then it gives you a 50% critical chance increase for 40 seconds. I will quickly go ahead and mention Affinity Spike here. It doesn't really do much going to help damage increases, but it's just nice for training purposes. And then finally, we got things like Void Levitation and Lethal Levitation. Now, they can be activated with your Operator's first ability, which suspends enemies, adding a lifted elemental type applied to them. And yes, this does increase your Condition Overload mod as its own type of status. This also applies an additional 50% weapon damage per lifted enemy attacked by the Operator, which stacks up to four times. And although this gives us damage increases, it's a little annoying to do, as suspended ragdolled enemies are not great for hitting, but hey, the option is there for you if you want to go ahead and use this. Now, if you don't have the Naramon Focus School, please use whichever you want to. Another recommendation is Batarai Focus School for its passive damage increases or even its Void Strike ability. The Router. So I won't go and spend too long on this part, but it's good to go ahead and mention. Since we're taking into account the combo counter, there is a gun that can actually help build up combo counter without actually needing to use the melee weapon. See, this is Calervo's signature weapon, the router. So I'll quickly go and slap my build up on the screen. I'm not really looking for damage here, but damage is also nice in some situations. More importantly, I want fast shots and fast reloads so that I can build up my melee combo counter fast and then put the weapon away. Whenever this weapon is used with Calervo, you can also go and receive a combo duration increase as well which also just adds more to our build passively melee weapons okay so this part i've been testing quite a lot of weapons and i will sit here comfortably and tell you with absolute confidence that within missions such as steel path void or even lua conjunction survival i can hit millions of damage with pretty much every weapon in some cases and with some weapons i can go and hit up to billions of damage and even reach the maximum damage cap of 2.1 billion damage on hit so it's not 100% always about the weapon, but more importantly, how you mod the weapon. So here's a rough breakdown. Starting things off with condition overloads. I do hope you've been watching the video long enough so that I don't really need to go and explain everything that's scaled off this. It's just the obvious choice. Prime reach, well, hitting more targets is great. It's a good quality of life, but it doesn't really add damage to the builds. Take it regardless, but do keep in mind of the follow through stat. You see, each enemy that you go and hit is basically receiving less damage. This isn't a stat that I like, but it's one to go and keep in mind in large packs, not all the damage is going to be the same and it may go and confuse you well this is why criticals now since calervo is pretty much our critical machine we're not going to be needed to focus first on critical charts no no more importantly critical damage is the first thing to go ahead and add in organ shatter amalgam organ shatter gladiator might and if you have a rhythm with critical damage chuck it on in critical chance is still nice to go ahead and use you see mods like sacrificial steel will yield us bigger returns on heavy attacks if you want to go and throw that in you can especially if it adds and increases to our critical tier see critical tiers will directly help our critical multiplier and our critical damage so if you can go and take them feel free to go and do so but go and put your critical damage mods first and then your critical chance mods second and of course blood Blood Rush can also be used in a build if you want to. Elements. Now, it's entirely up to you what you want to go and mod for here in Elements, but Elements are still going to be multiplicative damage within our builds. Most of the time, we're going to be going up against anything that has Ferrite armor, so the Grenier or the Corrupted version of the Grenier. We're going to go and want to go and mod for Corrosive. Throw in your highest damage mods for bigger returns, but mods like Focus Energy synergize with Calervo's passive, so each their own. Fit in whatever you can fit in. Faction mods. So these are going to go and add two layers for us. The first layer is multiplicative damage. They're multiplicative to condition overload and prime pressure point, but they're also multiplicative to elemental mods. So these are going to be nice going to factor in for extra damage. Second factor is if your melee has innate slash on heavy attack, like the hate does, for example, then that slash is double dipping, more damage and bigger dots. There are a few other mods that you can go and use. I'll quickly throw them up on screen here. So add in whatever you want to from this list, because I realized not everyone's going to have the same availability. Either way, damage, critical damage and elements are like the main factors. Quick mention on Tenokai. This is newer to Warframe recently and it's not actually bad to throw in if you have the room. It keeps your combo account on heavy attack which is nice but it's your call if you want to use it. Personally I think it goes better with a companion that is priming for you because it's easier to focus your rotations on this. Maybe it's just me but switching back and forth between the weapons whilst also trying to go ahead and get the proc on this is a little bit annoying. Try it out for yourself and see how you like it but it's not a necessity to have in the build by all means. And then finally, we got those melee arcades. Melee exposure is great to go ahead and throw into the build because it's easy to build up since we're rotating abilities quite often. And it has such a big duration for it, which is great. This basically adds 240% corrosive damage to our build as well. So yeah, 
Free damage in the form of an arcane is great stuff. You can also add in the melee animosity if you want to. That also synergizes what we're doing. It just needs a little more build up before you heavy attack. Okay then, so finally the Calervo builds. Now first things first. Violet Archon Shards are so unbelievable for this build. With five basic versions of them, we can go and get an additional 125% critical damage to our melee weapons. However, if you do have an energy pool over 500, this doubles. So now we got 250% critical damage increase. It's uh, kind of a no brainer to use this on Calervo when his first ability gives critical chance. These will go and give you critical damage. Name a better duo. Now, as for the build, we're focusing on strength for mostly. It scales pretty much with every ability, given bigger and better returns, so if you want more damage or better survivability, ramp this up first. From there, duration is pretty handy. You see Calivo's first and the subsumed option that you take from the list mentioned earlier will most than likely buff and scale off of duration. So adding this helps in with the quality of life and requires less rotation to focus on, and instead you apply that time to killing enemies. Efficiency isn't something that we need a lot of personally. See, your KPM is going to be quite high, so whacking on prime flow with equilibrium and then pairing that with the nourish subsume here is going to give you such an easy return with so much energy that you'll be capped most of the time however if you don't want to take that route and you took someone like raw you can also go and use a companion to help you out for the energy return and finally we got range personally it's not really something i need for my builds because i'm focusing on hitting high and having fun by doing that but if you do care for better quality of life just don't use the narrow-minded mods and instead keep your range around 100 percent or if you do want something fun to go ahead and try ramp range all the way up and spread collective curse because this build without strength will still absolutely delete enemies but the collective curse can help spread and nuke you see it's your call with the range as for the arcanes available, you can keep it pretty simple. I personally prefer the two melee arcanes for Fury and Strike. However, there are other options like the Molts or Energize if you do need them. Anything that buffs your melee or your stats is always a good route to go and take, so it's flexible to what you have available. Alrighty then, we got the final builds, the Companions. I'm not overly going to go super in-depth on the Companions, but I will mention two of them for Primer capabilities, and then another two that we can go and take to help you anyway. So up first are the Hounds. And it's to note, guys, I've recently released a video on these. So if you really want to see how it all comes together, I would suggest giving that a look, because there's a bit more depth to it. But the Hounds can be a little too overpowered, funnily enough, and can easily steal all your kills. I tend to not really use them here in this build. I like using them almost as like a company second warframe backing me up but again it can steal all my damn kills up next is the dive rigger sentinel this companion is absolutely fantastic at priming as well the arc coil will be similar to the hound's energized perspectives it doesn't reach as far as the energized perspective but i like that the dive rigger follows me around and it's close so it works really well with melee builds synth mod here is great for that equilibrium that i was talking about earlier if you've got it in your builds you don't really need companions to kill you just need them to damage recently and then you have a chance for a health orb on enemy death it's a really good mod to go ahead and use now everything else in this build synergizes as well and the one question i did always receive was well why duplex bonds now in this scenario we're using the hellstrom weapon as it launches micro missiles that causes splash aoe when landing at the target well what's better than one companion debuffing enemies with a primer four of them see each time that you go and expend 100 energy you'll summon in another companion and although they cannot use abilities we don't really need them for that instead they can seek a little further away from us and use the micro missile on those enemies so when we do effectively go ahead and catch up in that direction the enemies are ready and debuffed waiting for us to go to nuke them down as for the weapon builds if you remember the information earlier about primers then i should not really need to explain this if you skip the heads please go ahead and go back but this is my build and it works a treat Nautilus Sentinel can also be used, but not so heavy in the Primer department, in my opinion. More because the Nautilus is great for grouping enemies. With its Corda mod, it can go and pull enemies towards each other and towards you, giving you a bigger gap closer. And the Panzer Volbervila also works as well due to her viral procs on her quills. So if you don't have the first two companion options, you can still go ahead and use her because I know for a while we sat in a Panzer meta. So I'm sure you may still have one laying around. Okay, okay, that was a lot of info. Now let's go and have a little look about the setup and ability rotation. So let's go ahead and begin by building up our energy with kills with the Nourish Applied. Let's also go and focus on building up our combo counter here as well. And once you do go and have a bit of energy all set up, make sure you go and cast your recompense as early as you can as this will be your main survival tool. 
Overguard is absolutely insane right now. So go ahead and slap that on with a few quick casts and you are set. Do remember that if you are in a Naramon Focus School, you can apply any of those previous buffs that we talked about earlier whenever you need to. Just slot it in your rotation wherever you can, or if you don't want to, it's completely fine. Let's go and get our buffs cycled up and ready. Activate your Raffle Vengeance by holding and casting at your feet. If you do it this way, it gives you the freedom to do whatever you want to go and do next. And we can then go ahead and recast our Nourish and keep the duration cycle refreshed. Now then, let's go and use our Primer on enemies. And remember, your companion can also be a Primer too. But let's talk about the rotation with our Epitaph. Shoot your Primer a couple times into a group. Whatever weapon of choice you selected is fine, but get those enemies debuffed now. Hopefully with all of this setup and things applied, you will now begin hitting millions of damage. And for particular enemies, such as melee related enemies, dogs, or even the green air enemies with those shields, even evasion targets, for example, Examples, you can hit billions of damage and pretty consistently more often than not. Just do remember that follow through stat. You might not always hit 2.1 bill on every enemy. If you want to go and rotate collective curse into your rotations, you can do so whenever you want to and have fun with it. Apply it and nuke a room. Mess about with that as you will. You don't need me telling you when to rotate this thankfully. So guys, there you go ahead and have it. A full melee-centric build, rotating, deleting, and bruising through steel path content. And it's great that you guys are here for this video too, because I'm going to be using this video throughout the year as reference for multiple melee builds that can include and involve Colervo's subsumable raffle advance. Look out for those upcoming videos and builds down the line throughout 2024. Alrighty then, there's absolutely no way I could keep this video short because there's so many layers to explain. I do hope I have helped translate how it all comes together. So all I will go and ask in return is that if you enjoyed today's video, please go and hit that like button. Share the video with a friends if you want to go and give them something new or fun to try too and if you are new to this channel come subscribe but as always i'll be catching you guys again in the next video